In this video, we'll talk about one of the most common tasks that WordPress users face at some point, and that is to copy, stage, clone, or migrate a WordPress website. The terms are different, but the underlying principle is the same, so this video will show you how the process works, and you'll be able to do it yourself, or at least get a better understanding of what's going on if you decide to use a third-party service or a tool for this job. The idea is to create an exact copy of an existing WordPress website at another location on your server. The two WordPress installations would be fully independent with their own separate files and databases. That allows you to test various changes at the staged website without affecting the production site. And that way you can tinker with the design of your site and your actual website visitors will not even notice. Once you're satisfied with your changes, we'll show you how you can deploy them to the live website. Of course, there are different ways to accomplish this task, but they could be narrowed down to the following three methods. Manual, using a plugin, or through a hosting tool. Let's start with the manual method. It's free and it's sort of universal as you should be able to do it regardless of where your WordPress website is hosted. We can break it down to three simple steps. The first one is to copy the WordPress files from your live website to the new location where the staging instance would reside. The second step is to export the database and import it into a newly created one. And the last step is to update the WordPress configuration file. It might sound like too much work, but it's not actually that hard. We'll use our example web hosting website that we showed you how to build from scratch in one of our previous videos, hectohas.com. And you can see that it's placed at the www subdomain. Our task is to copy it over to another subdomain, and we'll show you all the different ways to do that. When it comes to copying the files, all web hosts provide some type of file manager that you could use for this job. At ICDsoft, we have a file manager at our control panel that allows you to easily do it. But first, let's create a new subdomain where our staging installation would reside. Let's go to the subdomain section and create a new one called staging. You should make sure to have this new subdomain covered with an SL certificate. If you have a wildcard certificate issued for your domain, you can skip this step. If not, go to the SL slash HTTPS section of the control panel. Let's encrypt certificates. Select the newly created staging subdomain and press the enable button. This will issue and install an SL certificate for that subdomain. All hosting plans at ICDsoft come with SL certificates included for free. As you can see in the interface, we can't actually issue a wildcard certificate because our domain hectohas.com uses an external DNS service, that of cloudflare.com. Now go to the file manager, navigate to the location where your live WordPress website is installed. Use the select all checkbox to select all files and folders, and then press the copy selected button to copy them over to the newly created subdomain. Let's go one level above, and we would see the different subdomains under the account, click staging, and now press the select button. The next step is to export your WordPress database. First, you should find out its name and that information is at the WordPress configuration file wp-config.php. Open that file for editing using the file manager of your web host and look for the following line. Define DB name and this long string. That's the actual database name, so I'll copy it over to my clipboard. Now we need to export it. Typically, all web hosts provide PHP MyAdmin, and it's a tool that allows you to export, import databases, and do all kinds of MySQL operations. So you can go to the PHP MyAdmin of your web host. We've used the MySQL 8 database, but the same instructions apply even if you've used MySQL 5. So now that you are under the PHP MyAdmin interface, select your database, click on the Export tab, and press the Go button. This should automatically start a download at your browser of your database export file also known as a MySQL dump file. Once you have that file, you can use the PHP MyAdmin to import it in your newly created database. With our hosting, it's actually much easier to export a database. Go to the MySQL databases section, and you can use the export button right next to the source database, and this will start exporting the database into a dump file in your private folder. Once that file has been generated, you can use the import button to import that file into a new database that will be dedicated to the staging installation. So our next task is to create a new database. And that way the staging installation would be fully independent from our production site. Go to the MySQL databases section in the control panel, change the version to MySQL 8, enter a name for it, and press the create button. 
Now we need to create a separate MySQL user that will be associated with the staging database. So go to the MySQL user step, enter a username, generate a strong password, but make sure to copy it in your clipboard and use the drop down menu to associate the user with our newly created database for the staging installation. So we would select the one with the underscore WP staging. Now we have to import all the data from the source database into our new one. And that's done by importing the MySQL dump file we generated in the previous step. Again, every host has phpMyAdmin, so I'll show you how to do it with it. Open phpMyAdmin, select the database that will be used by the staging instance, and you can see the signed node tables found in the database. That's because it's currently empty. Go to the import tab and use the choose file button to select the dump file from your own computer. Again though, if you're an ICD soft web hosting customer, there is a much easier way to do it. You can use the import button next to the newly created database at the MySQL database interface. So what I'll do is I'll demonstrate this technique as well. And I'll just have to empty this database first. And you do that by selecting all the tables and then select the drop operation from the drop down menu and press yes. So now navigate to our control panel, MySQL database section. You can see the info tip, which tells us that we have an archive of that database created in the MySQL dumps directory on the server. So we can use the import button next to our staging database and we'll directly import that archive. Since the file is already on the server, use the option labeled select an uploaded file. Go to the private folder, MySQL dumps, and select the archive. Press the import button and the file has been imported successfully. Now, if we go to the PHP My Admin just to verify, select the database and you can see that it's no longer empty and all data has been imported. So far, we've copied over the database and the files. And the last step is to update the WordPress configuration file. Again, you can use whatever file manager comes with your web host, navigate to the location where you copied the files of the staging installation, open the wp-config.php file for editing, and we need to update the database settings. First, we need to update the name of the database. That's next to the db underscore name variable. The one we created was called hecto underscore wp staging and our user was wp staging user and the actual password. So let's test our staging website now. I'll go to staging.hectohas.com, but as you can see, I just got redirected to the live website at https www.hectohas.com. That's because this address has been defined as the site URL of our WordPress installation in the database we copied over. So the very last step is to update that URL. Again, there are a number of different ways to do that. The first workaround is to do it via the PHP My Admin, where you need to update the options table and update the site URL and home fields with the actual address of the staging instance. I'll enter HTTPS staging.hectohas.com for both values. The other option is to update the URLs in the WordPress configuration file as those settings overwrite what's stored in the database. Basically, you need to open the wp-config.php file for editing and enter the following two lines there. Define wp home and the actual new URL and define wp site URL and again the new URL of the staging installation. Before you test your website again, know that you'll probably have to clear the cache of your web browser. Let's test our staging website now. Go to staging.hectohas.com and you can see that we are no longer redirected to the live website. You can see that the address bar of the browser remains the same and it contains the URL of our actual staging installation. Make sure to test the different pages of the website or at least as many as you can to make sure they're all correct. So we managed to set up a WordPress staging installation manually without using paid plugins or any other automated tools. It's not hard to do it, but it does involve a number of different steps that you would have to go through. If you want to make things a bit easier on yourself, you could use a plugin. We start at the WordPress dashboard of our live website, where you should go to the plugins, add new menu. Perhaps the most popular plugin for this task is called Duplicator. So let's make a search for it. Know that we're not affiliated with this plugin in any way and I'm just showing it to you so that you can see all the different ways of copying a WordPress website and that way you'll be able to decide for yourself which method would be most suitable for your specific needs. With all that in mind, let's install and activate Duplicator.
Now you can see that the duplicator menu just appeared on the left side of our dashboard. Expand it and select settings. Go to the packages tab and change the SQL mode to PHP code. Basically, we need to create a new package, which is actually an archive of our WordPress installation. So go to the packages menu, press the create new button, click next. You can safely disregard the notice concerning the size checks, so put a check on yes and click build. The package build completed, you need to download the actual package files, which consist of an installer file, which is a PHP script called installer.php, and an archive that contains our WordPress files and database. Once you download these files to your computer, you need to upload them to your server where the staging installation would reside. Run the installer script and it will ask you for your database settings. So you still need to create a new MySQL database and user and enter them. Validate and accept the terms, hit next. Once the process completes, at the end, you will see this important notice. Log in to the WordPress admin to remove all installation files and finalize the install process. So click on the admin login, which is just a link to the URL of our dashboard page. Note that whenever you clone, stage or copy a WordPress installation, regardless of how you call it, the login credentials for all the existing users remain the same. Log in with your existing credentials and you should see the sign, the site has been successfully migrated, the installation cleanup ran and it has removed all the installation files part of the duplicator plugin. So to summarize our experience with the most popular migration plugin for WordPress, and that's pretty much true for all such plugins, their use does automate a lot of steps part of the process, but it's still not super simple and straightforward experience by any means. If you're looking for a single click way of staging a WordPress website, you should check if the company that hosts your website provides such a tool. Here at ICSoft we have a hosting tool that can stage a WordPress installation for you with just a single push of a button. All you need to do is go to the WordPress tool in your control panel, click the edit pencil icon next to your WordPress installation. Under the site URL, change the subdomain to the one that will contain your staging instance and simply press the create staging button. And that's how easily we just created a fully independent staging instance of our WordPress installation. You can see that it now appears under the staging section and there is also a set as live button which is another super useful tool. If I wanted to just create a copy of this installation, that can be done under the site URL section. So what you need to do in order to copy or move this WordPress installation to another location on your server is simply configure the new URL. Select another subdomain, let's use test for example. The HTTPS option is selected by default because the tool detects that there is an SO certificate installed there. And I'll just press the change button. As you can see, the tool asks us to choose whether we want to move or copy this WordPress installation. I'll select copy. The difference between the copying and staging procedures is in the fact that if you've used the staging option, our WordPress tool provides you the option to easily push your changes from the staging website over to the live one. If you've used the manual method or a plugin to stage your website, you've done all your changes and you're satisfied with them and you want to push them over to the live site, you have two options. You either have to manually replicate all these changes all over again but at the live site or copy over the staging website to the live URL which is pretty much the same operation we just did but in reverse. The second option would in turn overwrite all the changes made to the live website in the meantime. For example, if you've added new posts, pages or products, they would be gone. And that's where our set as live functionality can be so useful. It gives you the option to preserve the content of your production website, which could be really, really helpful indeed. Another really important tip when it comes to WordPress staging installations in general, regardless of where your website is hosted, is to prevent search engines from indexing the staging site. That's because you can get penalized for having duplicate content or these URLs of the staging site itself could appear in the search results, which could confuse your visitors. So there's a lot of different issues that could arise and you wouldn't normally want that. To avoid this problem from happening in the first place, 
you can use a feature that's built in WordPress. Go to the dashboard of the staging instance, settings menu, reading, and activate the option discourage search engines from indexing this site. You can see the sign below though, it's up to search engines to honor this request. So if you want to take things a step further and be absolutely certain that search engines won't even be able to access the website, you could password protect it entirely. With ICD soft, this could be done via the protection tool in the control panel, web access protection, where you simply need to apply password protection on your entire subdomain. Note that once you do that, you would have to use that username and password combination in order to access the staging website. Of course, you can create as many users as you want, but a valid user would be required nonetheless. So these are the different ways you can stage a WordPress installation, a process that's also known as copying or cloning WordPress. Of course, not all WordPress installations are created equal, and there could be few isolated cases where some additional changes have to be made for the staging instance to work correctly. Typically, it comes down to running a mass search and replace function or clearing all the different types of caching mechanisms that could be in place. It could be server-side caching, team caching, or the usual caching plugin. For those of you that are hosted with ICD Soft, you can rely on our excellent support team for help by posting a ticket. A contact link to our support service is available in the description of this video. And those of you that are not as fortunate and are hosted elsewhere, you could refer to the blog post that's also linked below for more detailed tips on resolving such problems on your own. For more interesting videos on WordPress and everything related to web hosting, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.